Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer, you know, I said a couple lessons ago that I wasn't going to get in specifically and start talking about the new features of Media Composer 7, that we would just sort of roll them in to tutorials as we move along. Well, you know, I am going to be doing that, but I thought specifically for transcoding and consolidating the new updates that have come along. Uh, as far as background processing goes, I thought that that sort of dictated its own tutorial. So in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to talk specifically about transcoding, but everything I'm going to show you sort of, you know, transfers over to consolidating as well. And I want to show you how the background transcoding process works inside of Media Composer and believe it or not, outside of Media Composer as well. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Avid's Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, now before we even get into Media Composer, I know I said we're going to get in there and get started, but believe it or not, we're actually going to start from outside of Media Composer right now. And what I'm going to show you sort of works the same inside of Windows and Mac. The only thing is that you're going to find it on the Mac in a different location. What I'm about to show you, you're actually going to find at the top of the uh, Mac window up here in the toolbar at the top. For Windows, we're going to find it down here in the taskbar at the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to show the hidden icons. And one of the icons I have in here looks a little bit like this and you can see right now that the Avid Editor Services Manager is running. Now the reason that it's running is because I actually have Media Composer running over here. You'll see here it is. And I can actually start and stop that process or have Media Composer start and stop that process when it launches. And I'm going to get into showing you how that works in just a second. I just wanted to show you that actually from outside the application, if we have it minimized here, that I can actually come in and I can pretty much mouse right over top of it. I can right click and say, okay, well let's start the services. I can stop the services and I can even open the background queue right here from within this, in this case, Firefox, but you know, it could be, you know, Internet Explorer, Safari, depending on what browser you have running. Now we're going to get back to the, the uh, progress monitor for the background processes in just a second, but I just wanted to make you aware that this feature has now been added down here on your taskbar uh, for Windows and at the top toolbar for all of my Mac friends out there. Okay, now let's Alt tab into Avid's Media Composer and let's talk a little bit about what's going on now with background processing. Now for me to show you how this is going to work, we're going to put ourselves in a bit of a hypothetical situation. The hypothetical situation is that I'm an editor working on a show and I already have footage that I'm working with and I've had a cameraman go out and shoot stuff for me that they've brought back. The only problem is that I want to transcode this footage but I don't want to stop what I'm doing you know, to take up time for this whole process to go and I don't want to wait till the end of the day because I really need that footage in about an hour. So how can I actually get in and keep working and transcode this footage at the same time? Well let me show you how this is going to work. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new bin. Of course, we'll just call this the sequences bin. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open a, a bin by hitting Control and O uh, on Windows, Command and O for all my Mac friends out there. I'm just going to come down to my stock footage here. I'll just pick one of them here. It doesn't even really matter which one. How about basketball? And this is the footage that I'm going to be working with. And I have my sequences bin. And what I also want to do now is I want to uh, assume that for argument's sake, I, you know, someone went out and shot something on XD cam. So what's going to happen is, is that as soon as that XD camera is plugged in, Media Composer is going to see that. And what it's going to do is it's going to open a new bin. And we're just going to call this hypothetically the new shot clips bin. And what's going to happen is that inside of this bin, all of the clips that are currently on the camera that we're just going to assume for argument's sake happens to be, I don't want something that has too many clips. Let's find something that just has a few of them here. We'll choose gliding. I'm just going to choose, I'll just choose three of the five. I'll choose the first three here. And so what's happened is that the camera has been plugged in and I now have these three clips that are now on the camera that I want to transcode onto my system so that I can have it local for them to take that camera, take it away and keep shooting with. But like I said, the problem is that in most cases what happens is that I select these clips, I come up to clip, I come down to consolidate transcode, I select transcode, I come down, I select the drive I want to send it to, I can get in, I can, you know, apply reformatting options, apply color transformations, convert audio sample rates, etc., etc. But in most cases when I say go, I have to stop what I'm doing and wait for, in this case it's only three clips, so that's not a big deal, but I could conceivably have 300 clips that I need it to transcode. Now you're going to notice that we have a new option right down here at the bottom called, appropriately enough, run in the background. But I need something to work in conjunction now with consolidate and transcode. I'm just going to cancel out of this for a second here. I'm actually going to navigate up to tools and I'm going to drop that down and you're going to see down here that I now have three new options. First one called dynamic media folders, next one called background queue, 
and the next one called background services. Now we're actually going to start at the bottom and work our way back up because we kind of actually already talked about the background services. I'm just going to click on that. What this is basically doing is it's basically controlling. You'll see right down here what we have right here for the Avid Editor Services Manager. You'll see if I right click I can start the Avid Editor Services. I can stop them and I can open the background queue. Well this is where I can actually tell Media Composer, let me just, there we go, we got rid of that. This is where we can actually tell Media Composer to start or to stop the services. We can have it pause for five minutes and more appropriately we can have it start the Avid Editor services when it launches and we can even have it stop the Avid Editor services when it exits and we can also pause background services if we want to. Now in most cases I leave it just like this. I have the services start when the application launches and in most cases I just don't disable them when the system quits out. That's fine. I mean, for me, I don't really mind. Obviously, set this up however you like. Now, I don't need to start the services because they're already running. So all I'm going to do is simply say OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to these shots here. Actually, what I should do is come back up to Tools and just say, I'm going to open the background queue here. Now, you're going to notice the background queue is pretty much empty. But you'll remember this background queue actually looks very similar here to the background queue that we had inside of Firefox. Why is that? Well, because they're actually the exact same window. It's just we're seeing them from a different location. What I'm going to do is just minimize that for a second. We're just going to bring the background queue right over here just so we can see it, but it's not taking up too much real estate. So what I'm going to do with these three clips is I'm going to select them all by hitting Control and A on Windows, Command and A on the Mac. I'm going to navigate up to Clip. I'm going to come down to Consolidate and Transcode. What I'm going to do here is transcode, and we're going to send this to the D drive, and we're going to have it transcode them to DNX 90 HD, and I'm going to run this in the background. Now, as soon as I say go, what's going to happen is it's going to send that job to the background queue. Now, of course, I can just keep working away. I'm just going to edit some basketball stuff. Now, you'll see as soon as I do, take a look at what's going on down here now. The background queue has now started to process these clips. And you'll see new clips have been created up here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a quick sequence here while this is doing its thing. There we go. Sure. Audio doesn't really matter. You'll see that it's actually chugging along at a pretty good speed here. And we'll just have this slam dunk happen here. Sure, why not? edit this in, there we go, and you'll see that believe it or not, that whole process is now done. And you'll see that what's happened now is that inside of this bin is that three new master clips have been created. I now have these AMA Link 2 clips, of course, that were the original clips. I can still see them, but I don't really need them anymore. Why is that? Well, Because take a look, I can now come in and use the brand new clips that were transcoded in the background while I was working on other stuff. Very, very cool. Okay, now I'd say that that's pretty darn cool. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something even cooler. I'm going to select all these clips. I'm just going to delete them here because I don't want them in here. Because I'm actually going to bring these clips in a different way. What I'm going to do again is I'm just going to delete this sequence that I was just throwing together just for fun while I was doing the background processing. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to navigate back up to Tools and I'm going to come down and I'm going to set up a dynamic media folder. I'm simply going to select dynamic media folders and you're going to see now that I have the window up here right here. Now right now I have the default profile which is not what I'm going to use. We're actually going to update this. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the profile editor. And what we want to do here is we want to add an action. You're going to see that I have some settings in here for AMA link to. For bins, I can create a new bin. In this case, I'm going to use the active bin. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to use the active bin. I think we'll just stick with that. And what I'm going to do is I can come down to link options. I can set up multi-channel audio if I want. I can set the audio start time option for broadcast wave files. But what's most specific that I want to do in here is I want to come down and I want to add a new action. And what I want to do is I don't want to copy it to folder one. I want to transcode this clip or these clips that I'm going to bring in here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. I'm going to leave the project type obviously 720p 2398. We'll leave the raster as 1280 by 720. We'll set the codec to be DNX, uh, DNX HD 90 MXF. And we're going to set the video drive here to be the D drive. Very cool. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to simply say save. I'm going to call this KPM's trans or background BG transcode. 
I'll say OK. And you'll see now that I now have that as a background process. What we're going to do is we're simply going to add a folder now. Now the question is, what folder do I want to add? Well, I'm going to come down to the D drive here. I'm going to come over here, and you're going to see that I actually have a folder called the Footage Dump Bin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select that folder. We're going to enable the folder as well. And what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to take some footage and I'm going to dump it into this folder. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hide Media Composer. Now what's important to keep in mind is that if I come down here, we come back here and I right click and I open the background queue, you're going to see here that this window of course mimics exactly what we had inside of Media Composer here. You'll see there's the background queue right here. You can see we have the actual job itself and the three clips that are contained within that job. And right here we have the job with the three clips contained in it. So you'll see, you can see all of this information whether you're inside of Media Composer 7 or not. Okay, so what we were going to do here is we were just going to minimize everything here. I'm going to come back. I'm going to Windows E to call up the Windows Explorer or obviously Command and N to call up a new window on the Mac. I'm going to come to the D drive here and I'm just going to come down to footage and I'm going to come back to my gliding footage here. I'm just going to take the first three clips again, nothing fancy. I'm going to copy those clips. We're going to come back. Let's come all the way back to the D drive and I'm going to come to the footage dump folder. I'm just going to delete the one clip that I had in there and I'm simply going to paste these three clips in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into Media Composer. Let's call up the background queue. Actually, that's the dynamic media folders here. And you'll see that as soon as it sees the footage, the footage is now here and it's acquiring it right now. And I can actually hear the drives grinding uh, outside of my headphones. And what I want to do is come back up to the background background queue here. We're going to call that up and you're going to see there are the clips going processing in the background. Now you'll see basically what it's done is it set each one of these up as their own job. And you're going to see here that in just a second once it finishes all of them. Now of course I could be working on something else while it's doing this. I don't necessarily need to be uh, sitting here watching paint dry as the expression goes. And what's going to happen is that once this last job is done, there we go, these clips are now ready to be brought into my bin. All I have to do is simply come right over here and say acquire and boom, there they are. And much like as if I had AMA linked to and then done the same process inside of Media Composer, you can see I have AMA linked to clips to the original clips and their transcoded counterparts. So I hope this tutorial has shown you how powerful the background processes inside of Media Composer 7 really are. And there's something that, especially if you use a tapeless workflow, you should start implementing into your workflows right away. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.